Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Aquarium Online Academy. My name is James. I work here in the Education Department. We're going to talk about seals and sea lions today. I have my stuffed friends helping us out because they're going to be very important in helping us learn the differences between seals and sea lions, but also why it's important to care about them and make sure that they're in our habitats here in Southern California. Now, we have a lot of friends helping us out today. Cynthia and Dana are going to help control all the fun behind me here. Sarah's on question control, so ask her a million questions right here at this number. 562, or yeah, 562-286-1838. I almost forgot the number. I don't know how. But that's the number you can email us if you're watching live. If you're not watching live, you can still participate. There's an email you can email us at, at live at lbaop.org. Or if your, answer, your questions to your answers aren't coming out, you can email us still. If you have more questions afterwards, or you get stuck down the rabbit hole watching tons of Aquarium Online videos, you can still email us questions. We'll have our staff help out by answering some of those. But text us at that number if you have questions about seals and sea lions today. Well, let's talk about the differences between them because we should probably know the difference between the California sea lion and the harbor seal. Now, they're two very common animals that live here in California. So let's put my friend off my shoulder down a little quick. How are these animals described? If you had to describe one, imagine I'd never seen a sea lion before. How would you describe it to me? We're all scientists. So scientists have to observe and describe and possibly write things down, possibly draw things. I'm sure you were drawing with Dana earlier today. Lots of scientists and naturalists in history have drawn the animals that they find. So if you had to describe it to me, how would you describe a sea lion? One of the first things I've noticed is the color of a sea lion. They're kind of brown in color, aren't they? Now, it's not always the same exact color brown everywhere, but they're all brown. There's no patches or other colors in there. It's all brown. What else do you notice on the sea lion? Hmm. <gasps> it's got whiskers just like I do. Well, maybe not the same. It's got longer whiskers. Their whiskers are much longer. Oh, look at those cute whiskers. I think this is Parker. He's our largest sea lion here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Now, the whiskers that they have, the vibra or vibrissae, I think it's vibrissae, it's uh, helping them in their habitat. Why do our dogs and cats have whiskers? It's not just for cuteness. What do they do? Well, with a cat, it's kind of special. Anything that they can fit their head into that their whiskers don't touch, they can fit their whole body into. Unless it was like my cat, who was a little overweight, and she would not fit no matter what. But otherwise, their whiskers help them feel their habitat. Can you feel the wind in your hair if you have hair? If you don't have hair, that's okay. Can you still feel it? Yeah, you can feel the wind. What if you have to feel the water moving around them? What if they have to feel vibrations in the water? If you were underwater and you're swimming around with the sea lions, they could probably feel that you are near them because of their whiskers. Now, what else do you notice about sea lions? Let's stick with this picture real quick because it's really up close. That's right there. What are these things? They have ears. They're mammals just like us, and they have a lot of the same senses as us. They have probably a few extra special ones that we don't have. But they can hear. They can actually hear very well, especially underwater. They have eyes like we do. Do they blink? Yeah, but they have a special eyelid. They have a see-through eyelid that they can look through while they're underwater. It protects their eyes. It's called a nictitating membrane. It'd be really cool if we didn't have to wear goggles underwater. We just had special eyelids that we could close and we could swim without goggles. I would love to be able to do that. All right, so that's a great picture of a sea lion. But let's compare the seals. The harbor seal has a lot of differences that we should be able to find. Oh, look at this very cute seal that's just sunning itself on the rocks. You shouldn't go snuggle with them, though. They're not that friendly. They're cute. Not that friendly. What do you notice as a difference? Hmm... It's got different colors. We started with color on the sea line. It has different colors. Good. What else do we notice? Is there anything that's the same? We don't want just the differences. What else is the same? Hmm. I see flippers and fins. The sea lion have flippers and fins. If we look at our stuffed animal model, the, the sea lion looks like it has really big front flippers. Do the seals look like they have really big front flippers? Not that much. Hmm. So we'll talk about their movement and how they swim, too. So the flippers might be different. Let's keep, a, keep our minds on that one. What else is different between the seal and my sea lion friend? Hmm. Oh, 
Look at them swimming in the water. That's actually one of our baby seals we've had in the past. I don't think that's our most recent baby, Kaya. That might be one of the ones from a few years ago. So you can see they have big whiskers too. That's a similarity. All right, big whiskers. What about the color you see on this seal? On that one that we saw in the picture of, they are kind of dried out, so the color changes when they dry out. So they have this spotted or speckled or even uh, modeled pattern. Modeling, uh, M-O-T-T, -T, mottling, means spotted or patchy. So they have this modeled patchy colors of dark and light. And then the sea lion has all dark colors. All right. So that's a lot of great information about the seals and sea lions. Is it, do you, wait, do you see any ears on these harbor seals? I got ears on my sea lion, friend. What about on these seals right here? I'm going to step out of the way so we can take a look at our seals. You can see the, the spotted pattern on their bodies. How are they moving? Does that look like walking to you? I don't know about the rest of you, but that is not how I walk through through my my home. I don't I don't slink along in my stomach. Maybe I'm really tired. This is actually called galumphing. Galumphing is kind of a not not the most elegant way to move around. It actually, the definition just kind of means clumsy. So it's kind of a clumsy way to walk, but it doesn't look like they're doing that bad. They're very successful animals. And they do this glumping kind of sloshing as they get up and move around. I'm watching the video too. It's very cute watching them move around. But the sea lions move differently. So you notice they don't have big flippers they stand up on, whereas sea lions can. So those harbor seals can stand up on those flippers, whereas sea lions, or the, yeah, sea lions can stand up, seals cannot. So if you wanted to practice having sea lion flippers, oh, look at them swimming around so great look at that oh they're blowing bubbles too they can blow bubbles Ooh, swimming around like a sea lion did you see the same kind of motion from our harbor seals not the same now this is underwater compared to the harbor seals being on land but they move very differently so when you watch them swim the back flippers on a sea lion help them steer whereas the front ones help them fly underwater they're swimming with them Harbor seals are the opposite. The front ones are for steering because they're a little short. They can't really do too much with that. And then the back ones actually help push. And it looks like they're grabbing water with those back flippers. So seals and sea lions swim very differently. Now the sea lions can swim a little faster. So they can porpoise by jumping up and out of the water a lot. Whereas most seals aren't going to do that. Seals are kind of stealthy ocean ninjas. They just stick their faces up a little bit. And then they go back into the water and disappear on you. In fact, on the whale watches that I help uh, monitor, I don't think I've seen a sea lion in the middle of the ocean more than once or twice. Mostly, we only see them on the rocks. Whereas sea lions, we see out in the water a lot because they're very active and very acrobatic when they're out in the water. We had one of our first questions come in. Clyde, Clyde, thank you so much for joining us and asking questions today. Clyde noticed that seals have spots. Great job. Great observations. Now, some seals have different spots and then some other seals have no spots the harbor seal has this kind of um, leopard spot kind of pattern to it but Clyde wants to know what do seals eat that's a good question I have a seal skull somewhere not where I thought it was there it is I found it I have a whole table of artifacts to show you so here is a model. This is a plastic replica. This is not a real one. This is a model of a seal skull. Okay. Very similar. So their heads are not quite as big as a sea lion. All right. Now the sea lion also has this big ridge. Remember that picture of Parker? Parker has a big bump on his forehead. That happens with adult male sea lions. They get this sagittal crest that grows up on their forehead, whereas the females won't have the sagittal crest, but they still have a pretty big pretty big skull so take a look at Parker's head right here you can see the sagittal crest this big bump all right now when we look at their teeth we just grab the lower jaws of these skulls we look at their teeth their teeth are kind of big triangle shapes very pointy what would you assume an animal with big teeth like this would eat they even have big canine teeth do we have canine teeth if there's plenty of ones in the front the canine teeth help us grab our food or tear our food. But we have flatter teeth in the back. We have molars. Molars help us chew and mush up our food. Do they have really flat teeth in the back? They all kind of look the same. Here we go. This is actually one of our vets looking inside Parker's mouth to check Parker's teeth. 
But Parker, Parker has pretty dark teeth. Parker, did you not brush your teeth? Mm, actually, he's not supposed to. I bet you all wish you could be sea lions. I, I don't want to have to brush my teeth all the time. When their teeth are dark colored, that actually is good. The darkness is a good bacteria that keeps their mouth clean and healthy. So if their teeth are too white, that could actually be a bad thing for a sea lion. It's not that way for harbor seals. Harbor seals, we've actually trained them to allow us to brush their teeth every day. So you want to be a sea lion, not a seal, if you, if you don't like brushing your teeth. But we can train them to open their mouths so we can check their mouth, their gums, their teeth, make sure everything is healthy. And you can see Parker's got those two big canine teeth right there on the bottom. That's a beautiful picture. We can see the external ear flaps for a sea lion. We can see his big sagittal crest. Harbor seals don't have the sagittal crest. They don't have external ears, but they just do still have ears. So they can hear underwater just as well as sea lions can, as far as I can tell. They just don't have any external earlobes. So, all right. That's some really good differences about our seals and sea lions we have here at the aquarium. But let's talk a little bit about our care for the seals and sea lions. So we saw that one of the vets was helping check their teeth. Well, we have to do a lot to make sure our animals are healthy here because it's not the same as their ocean habitat. Here under human care, we have to do a lot of things to monitor them, including sizing them up. We'll weigh them and measure them. Actually, they get weighed almost weekly. I don't know how often we measure their length, but this is uh, Debbie and Jimmy helping out with a weigh-in for one of our harbor seals. And we use positive reinforcement training. So you might sometimes see in an exhibit or when people are working with the animals, a pole with this big float on the end, and they point it at the animal. That's called a target pole. And the pole is just meant to help them focus their attention. So we put the pole in an area and just like Debbie's using her hand, we'll use our arm as an extension so that they will focus on our hand so they can stretch out, they can follow us. Or sometimes we just have them press their nose to our hand and then we can try and take a look at them. Now, Parker has to get eye drops every day. I don't know how many of you love getting eye drops. My friend Katie hated having eye drops. I had to help her with it sometimes. So even people get nervous about eye drops. Well, imagine you're a seal or a sea lion. They have no idea what these things are for. But we help use this training process so that they have a relationship with the, the staff that are helping them out. They know what to expect. It's all good stuff. It's not something to be scared of. And that way, they participate in their health care. And it's a lot safer for us to interact with the animals when we need to do those things. Some people really don't like needles. Animals will take a blood draw. We can train them to sit in the spot and let us look at their flippers and we can draw blood if we need to check their blood for something. And it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of work so that the animals become more comfortable with our staff. But it can be a very positive way for us to interact with them rather than trying to force them to participate in that healthcare. So here's Parker getting those eye drops. Right here, we talked about the target pole. We can just use our hand, closed arm or closed hand so that they touch their nose to it. It's not meant to do anything else but get their attention. And then while they're Focus on Parker, they can drop the drops in his eye. So that is a lot of good things about our healthcare system that the animals have. So because of that, our seals and sea lions tend to live a lot longer than their cousins might out in the ocean. They have lots of food available. There's no predators and have healthcare on site ready to help them if they need it. All right. Well, let's take a look at, I think we have some elephant seal footage we can take a look at. So we have some other types of seals and sea lions we might be able to show you. Now, there's a lot of species of them. So unfortunately, we don't have pictures of every kind of seal and sea lion, but there are uh, quite a few similarities between all of them. So all of these true seals, like a harbor seal or an elephant seal, they don't have the external ear flaps. So when we get to see the elephant seals, see if you can look for that. Can you see the spots where their ears are, but they have no external ear flaps? Now, sea lions look very similar some are bigger, some are fluffier, some are a little skinnier. But sea lions generally look very much the same across the planet. So here's a, I think this is a NOAA video. Uh, so yeah, our friends at NOAA have some videos that we can show off. And this is a beach full of elephant seals. Now, I kid you not, if you were at this beach filming, you would love having a face mask because they are very stinky. Seals and sea lions do not smell good, especially when there's a few thousand of them. And, and that's okay. That's just nature. That's the way they are. Now, you can't quite see because they're not super close in, but there's a lot of animals that will haul out onto the beach. They kick sand up. Actually, you can see that male's uh, nose right there. Might be a younger male. Oh, I'm trying to follow him as the camera goes away. <laughs> they have this big elephant-like nose. 
And it's not like a, a, a land elephant's nose where their trunk can do things and it's very muscular. Their nose is pretty much all for show. And then the males, when a big male is trying to attract a mate, he'll hang out on the beach, he's the beach master. I'm the beach master. I have a really big nose. And the males will compete for space because during rut, which is their summer breeding season, large males of seals and sea lions will pick a space on the beach. This is my zone. And then potentially they could mate with the females that are in that area. That's okay. It turned black because the, the picture turned off. We'll get another one up there. Don't worry. Uh, but the males will take that space and any female that's in his zone might or might not try to mate with them and have babies. There's not a rule that they all do, but they control that area. And any other males that want to take over that space, they'll kind of fight. Not so much typically that they will hurt each other uh, to the point of death, but they will injure each other every once in a while. Scratches, you can see a lot of scars on the male's chest as they bump and bite at each other's chests. That's a normal thing for seals and sea lions. But the male sea lions, or the male, uh, excuse me, elephant seals, will compete with who's got a bigger face. And then, so you can be kind of scary because they're also huge animals. They're a few thousand pounds. But remember, they want to just kind of show a force who's the bigger, who's the bigger guy. This one apparently is winning. And I was like, never mind. It's yours. You can have it. The other side of the beach is my favorite now. And that's just how nature is set up is that different members of a species will compete or try to show off enough to get a mate. In other types of mammals or birds, there's a little bit more show of I'm the best version of my species, so you should have a baby with me. But in other cases of mammals or birds, there's some competition of trying to kick out a potential competitor. So it's a little bit different depending on what animal you are as to how they try to find a mate. But what about their conservation? We'll get into that in a sec. Otis got a question. How many seals and sea lions do we have at the Aquarium of the Pacific? Well, my friend Emily made a very nice list right there because I have a hard time memorizing all of them. We have Parker, Kane, Chase, and Harpo. So we have four sea lions. Now, the seals that we have, we also have four of them. We have Kaya, who's the youngest, Shelby, Ellie, and Troy. Now, uh, sh which one? Ellie is over 30 years old now. So she is uh, getting up there, but she's got a lot more life. Remember, animals that live under human care have a lot more opportunity to live a longer life than they might out in the ocean. So sea lions out in the ocean might live 7 to 12, maybe 15 years. But at an aquarium setting, they could live 20 years potentially or more. Depends on, on the individual, uh, how they are. Some Remember, just like all of us, we don't all live to be the same age. Works the same for other mammals too. Now, the seals, they can live well over 30 years when they're under human care. So that's a really nice thing. We have a quite an older harbor seal who's also an Atlantic harbor seal. Now, the cool thing about harbor seals, remember their spotted pattern, different depending on where they're from. If you're a West Coast harbor seal versus an East Coast harbor seal, there's a different number of spots. The East Coast harbor seals have more light coloring and fewer dark spots. So this is a Pacific harbor seal. A lot more darkness on their body, especially around their belly and their back, compared to what Ellie would look like, who is an East Coast harbor seal. So we have a lot of pictures of animals, so Cynthia's trying to find all the cool ones and cute ones for you too, because there's a lot of cute factor going on right there. All right, well, let's talk about their conservation. Why is it important to have them in their habitat? We said that they live out on the beach, they try to find mates. There's actually a lot of them now. There didn't used to be. And the reason is because people used to hunt them for their fur and their meat. So people probably would eat them somewhat, but a lot of the fur was used for clothing items, gloves, hats, blankets. And it used to be that the indigenous peoples would hunt them, but as soon as more people figured out that they were useful, that happens with a lot of species. We find out it's a useful thing and we overfish or overhunt them. And because we overdid it, we had to protect them. People saw that we need these animals in our habitat. So in 1972, the Marine Mammal Protection Act was brought in to help protect all marine mammals. Seals, sea lions, whales, dolphins, otters, all the mammals that live in the ocean. And by doing that, we help provide that safety for them so that we can't hunt them. And that way they can repopulate. Now, California sea lions have very much repopulated. They are so healthy in their population numbers. There's almost enough that the environment can't hold anymore. 
Harbor seals have recovered very well too, but there's some seals and sea lions that are still endangered across different parts of the world. Um, the, uh, no, I think these are just California sea lions. This is a raft of California sea lions, and they're hanging out in the ocean, waving. They're actually trying to keep their flippers warm. So they stick them out of the water to get some sun, they get warmed up, and they can put them back in. And California sea lions, like I said, are so highly numbered that we're not really worried about their population at all. And what's their importance? That's an important question that people ask. Why do we need them to be in the environment? Well, they eat a lot of the food that is in the ocean and ensuring that the populations are balanced. So they eat squid and octopus and fish. They eat a lot of the same fish that the dolphins do. Now, it's not that they're competing with dolphins. Dolphins can actually swim faster than them. So if they wanted to, the dolphins could just outrun them and go get the fish they wanted. But they're eating a lot of the same items. And so when they're eating all those fish, those fish are staying in a correct population level. If there's no sea lions, we get too many fish. Those fish eat something too. Well, if there's too many of them, well, the next thing they eat, there's not enough. And then we get this complete imbalance of how the ecosystem is supposed to work. So if we have just the right amount, we have everybody eating the right amount of things, all the populations stay balanced and healthy because this kelp forest habitat that these sea lions live in can be very fragile. There's a lot of things that can happen in a kelp forest habitat that can make it so that it doesn't support animals like sea lions. Now, how do we help protect them? Well, we stopped hunting them, so that's good, but there's more that we can do. Take a look at this kelp forest habitat. What happens if there are pollutants or trash or debris in the ocean? Well, that's not good for them. That could make them sick if they eat it. Well, think about the other things that wash down the stream. Anything that goes out of the storm drains in Los, storm drains in Los Angeles will get into the ocean. So anything that washes down our storm drains could hurt these animals. So that's not good. There's chemicals that come from our vehicles, that come from uh, irrigation runoff, agriculture, that could potentially harm this environment. Now remember, they rely on the fish being in the kelp forest habitat. So just as much as we need sea lions, we need the kelp and the things that the kelp support to order in order to help support the sea lions and the seals. The seals will eat more crustaceans and things off the seafloor, whereas the sea lions are going to be out eating more fish out in the open water. So as long as we're protecting the habitat, we can kind of protect everybody. And how do we do that? Well, we talked about a couple of things. We, we stopped hunting them. Maybe we were more responsible with the products we use on land so they don't wash into the ocean. Maybe we're more responsible at how agriculture is run so that any runoff from them doesn't get into the ocean. But there's another complex thing that we can do, and it's not always easy as a consumer, the person buying the thing. It's sustainable seafood. It takes a lot of work to research the right things, but everybody has that opportunity. However you can participate in their conservation is a good thing. We don't all have to be perfect at conservation. We can all conserve imperfectly, and we will all have a positive effect at the end. So if there's too much negativity, we have a net negative effect. If there's a net positive effect, that's good. Remember, we don't have to be perfect. We can be good enough and the ecosystems are resilient in most cases that they will survive despite some of the things that we may end up doing. So you can do a lot of different things if you want to help protect seals and sea lions. You can do like you're doing now, educate and learn about them from the Aquarium of the Pacific or any number of other institutions that want to talk to you about them. You can use different products. You can make sure your trash or your waste goes in the right receptacles. Eating different things. If we have a healthy diet with less land-based meat and agriculture, it kind of helps the environment in the oceans too. So there's a lot of little things that we can all do that help benefit these animals. All right, now, what other fun things should we look at? Are there any more cute videos that Cynthia and Dana want to show us? Dana says yes. She's very confident in the cute factor. So while they're looking for something fun, Let's talk about some of the sizes of these animals. That's one of the questions we get from a lot of our viewers. It's how big is that thing? Well, a harbor seal might be a few hundred pounds. So this is clearly undersized. Uh, an adult harbor seal might be a few hundred pounds, whereas an adult California sea lion could be about 800 pounds. So this is also undersized. Parker, our big male sea lion, he's probably at his maximum uh, almost now where he can get around 800 pounds. But after the summer, he'll be about 600 pounds. He bulks up. So he's a big, big burly guy for rut. Remember, they want to find a mate. Well, Parker won't be able to mate with anybody in the exhibit because they're all boys. But this is baby Toby, 
Uh, but Parker is not going to eat as much in the summer, so they bulk up. Seals and sea lions do this. They bulk up in this right before the summer so that they can kind of fast while they're in rut. Aw, baby Toby. Now, I think Toby was, was born a, a pretty big baby. Um, I think most of our harbor seal babies have been very large babies. Now, what Toby's doing right now is nursing. They're mammals. They drink milk from mom. And in other times, they, they're playing with the staff because we do give them enrichment, which is playtime. It's playtime with a purpose. So sometimes we just got to fill up the pool. Sometimes they'll play with the water, even if that wasn't the intent. <laughs> I actually haven't seen this video, so I find this amazing and hilarious. And so there's toys. There's things for them to play with in the exhibit. It's called, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called enrichment. Remember, it's play with a purpose. So they, we let them play. We let them have fun. But it helps keep their minds active so that they're solving puzzles, they're doing things, they're interacting with each other, being social, just like seals and sea lions would out in the ocean. Aww. <laughs> baby animals are definitely the cutest things you could you could watch at an aquarium. And we get lots of baby animals. Not from seals and sea lions. We've only had a few babies, baby seals here. We do get lots of other babies. But since this is about seals and sea, seals and sea lions, we should probably look at more seal and sea lion pictures, right? All right. Now, the elephant seal we looked at was a huge animal. It may not look like that on the video. It looks like it's my size, right? Mm. Elephant seals are the biggest of the seals. They get, like, said, many thousand pounds, three to 4,000 pounds or more. I think they actually get bigger than that. And they can stand when they're, like, leaning up like the boys were doing to fight, like, no, I have a bigger face. They're at that, that point, they're about my height. So if they could stand all the way up on, on their tail, they'd be at, like, at least twice as long as me. So they're big animals. The biggest of the California or the biggest of the sea lions is not the California sea lion. I believe it's the stellar sea lion, who is a very similar shape and proportion to a California sea lion, but it is much bigger. I can think the males get over a thousand pounds. So stellar sea lions are big. We do see them in California, Southern California anyways, a little bit here and there. And the only way you can tell is because they're massive. So the boys are easy to tell from the, the girls because the boys have the really big crest on their head and then the females don't have that little crest oh you're a big big sea lion they, they are ginormous so i see parker and parker's 800 pounds like oh parker's big stellar sea lions are huge yeah this one's probably over a thousand pounds for a boy now the cool thing about sea lions is there's other species of sea lion that have similar proportions oh yeah so there's a couple of younger ones. That might actually be a female with her pup. Oh, more sea lions on buoys. Now you might see the term fur seal somewhere. Dana just said fur seal. That is actually a sea lion. It looks like a seal that's really furry. So fur seals are sea lions. And well, okay, what's the difference? What's the, why is that important to say? Well, sea lions have their own group called Otaridae, and that just means eared seals and then there's the true seals and the true seals there's mm, i think fewer species no there's more species of true seals excuse me more species of true seals so the things like elephant seals harbor seals you have uh the one that make the bubble out of their nose i can't remember their name and you have ring seals they have so many species of seals and they none of them will have the, the external ear flaps but all the sea lions do now the sea lions all have very similar proportion and brown coloring um, I think one of the African or Australian species has a really huge head. It almost looks like it has a lion's mane behind their head. Sarah just wrote in that stellars can be 11 feet long. 11, these are the males. And up to 2,500 pounds. That's a big sea lion. If we put one next to Parker, Parker would be like, what, what is this thing? This is huge. And Parker is one of our biggest animals at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So that's kind of cool that they can be so massive. But remember, they are a very important animal to our coastal habitats. They might fish out in the ocean, but they have to crawl out on land to sleep and have babies. So the coastal habitats are also important to protect too, not just their food sources, not just making sure the animals are not being hunted in the ocean when they're not supposed to be. So there's a lot of things that are important about our ecosystems and our animals. I hope you all learned a lot about seals and sea lions today. Uh, we have more coming up as uh, habitats, I think is the next class. Yes. Nope, food webs, not habitats. We're going to talk about food webs. So a food web is a relationship between lots of living things in the ecosystem. We'll talk more about that later at our 2 o'clock program on Pacific Standard Time. 
Thank you so much for joining us on your Friday for Aquarium Online Academy, and we'll see you on the next class.